Today, we're gonna to talk about color and getting it right at capture. I'm gonna show you some tools and techniques that you can use no matter what camera brand, whether in the field or the studio, to get color dialed at capture. Well, hey everybody, it's Hudson. Welcome to this week's Approach in the Scene. I wanna thank everybody in the community who's been sending in questions, who's been participating in my free Tuesday morning office hours. You can sign up for that at hudsonhenry.com slash office hours. It's a big Zoom meeting of photographers talking about fun topics and doing lots of Q&A. Um, today we're gonna to talk about capturing color accurately and some simple tools and techniques that you can use in the field. I've got uh, three different products here from Data Color and X-Rite that I use pretty frequently. They go in order from most expensive to cheapest and from heaviest to lightest. So some kind of cool stuff there. Uh, I'll show how I use those and go through and, and edit an image. I think that, you know, last week I talked about monitor calibration and how important it is to make sure that the colors that you're editing on your screen are accurate, that what you think you've got that image looking like is actually what it would look like if you went on to a color managed professional's uh, system and we're looking at, they're looking at it on a, on a color critical monitor. So if you send it off to the lab to be printed or if you send it to your printer, that your printer knows what colors you intended. Um, it's just a, a fundamental base point. But the other thing that's really subjective often is what color we were actually out capturing. You know, If your white balance isn't quite right in your camera, it kind of comes down to memory. And I think it's nice to have a reference point of what were those colors actually in that lighting condition in that moment. And, and these three tools will get you there. This bigger piece from Data Color, the Spider Checker, uh, is pretty cool. It has a really nice white balance target on one side along with a color checker on the other side. And you can actually pop this apart and turn it into a profiling color checker where if you shoot this and you use their software, you can create a LUT, a lookup table, a color profile that's dialed for your camera, for the lighting condition that you're in. This is really nice for studio photographers. So, you know, if you have a constant setup that you maybe do portraits in and you're consistently bringing people in and shooting them with the specific camera in a specific lighting condition, you can just shoot this target and use their software to create a profile that you just apply on import to all your images and the color will be perfect. For me, the kind of work that I do out in the field, I tend to like to leave this thing set up and also even here in the studio because I'm constantly shifting around positions in the studio, I tend to leave it on the gray card setup that has neutral gray and white to black. Uh, and then I can just leave this in my scene under the lighting condition that I have and create a white balance just by clicking it with the white balance eyedropper in my post-production software, whether that's on one, whether that's Lightroom, whether that's Capture One for those of you out there, or whichever software you're using, Luminar. I also use this little color checker from X-Rite. X-Rite also has the same software that comes with this. This is the Photo Passport 2 color checker. It's about three ounces. It's much lighter and smaller. You know, it's the size of a wallet, fits in your camera backpack really nicely. If you open the other side, it has a beautiful white balance checker too. And you just throw this out in your scene, shoot it, and you can easily white balance your scene just by clicking the eyedropper in your post-processing software on that neutral target again. So this other one is kind of new to me. It came with the monitor uh, profiling kit, the Spider X kit that I got from Data Color that I showcased last week in my monitor calibration video. And, and it's called a, um, it's a data color like spider cube is the name of it. You can hang it from something Christmas ornament style. It has a light stand mount in the bottom, which also their big color checker has. And you can also just set it in your scene. And the cool thing about it, it has a perfectly neutral, you know, gray and white bit and a black part with a hole in it that works as a shadow and black point calibrator. So if you shoot this thing, you can actually in post-production, it helps you with raw processing your file because this should be very close to pure white. That little hole should be black, but you should see a difference between it and the shaded area around it. And that gray part works perfectly as a gray card. This thing weighs less than an ounce. It's even, it's very, very light. It's a little, you know, on the bulky side, depending on what room you've got in your camera bag, but it's pretty easy to throw in your kit, especially at less than an ounce. It almost weighs nothing. 
So I'm going to show you. I'm going to set up. I'm going to shoot each one of these, and then we'll go in, and I'll show you how I would use it to get the color right. So first, I'm going to shoot the. Um, well, we'll go in the order that we started. I'll just throw this um, data color spider checker in here, and I got my Nikon Z7 in a really terrible white balance for the moment. I think I'm on cloudy white balance. And we'll keep some of my MacBook Pro in here. Shoot that guy. Uh, and then sort of the same shot with the x right Passport Photo 2. This is kind of the middle option. I think it's about 100 bucks or something like that. There are some benefits to this bigger spider checker or to a bigger checker for studio work where you want to do a custom white balance and you want to hold it up in front of the camera and fill the frame with it. But for out in the field travel adventure, this thing's just a perfect size. I've been carrying it everywhere for a while. And then I'll put the little cube in here and I'll take a shot sort of specifically for that cube where we can do a, a custom raw process on that. All right. I'm going to bring those files into my computer. I'll do a little bit of work on them. You can see how these things benefit you with getting perfect and accurate color. And, and I'll pop back up and uh, talk to you at the end. OK, so here we have those three images that I just shot. I'm going to show you this in both on one Photo Raw 2020 as well as Lightroom uh, Classic, which I have open right now. So I've got this horribly white balanced image and it happens to contain my data color spider checker. And all I really have to do is grab the little white balance eyedropper here. I'm in develop and I'm in the, the basic panel and right by white balance, you got a little eyedropper. We'll just run over and click on that neutral target. Bam, all of a sudden, Color's perfectly balanced. Now you can go ahead and tweak that if you want, warm it up a little bit or whatever, but it gives you that base point where you know that's neutral. Same thing, if you're in Photo Raw, here we have one with the X-Rite color checker, the Photo Passport 2. All I do is come down here to the color panel. Again, I'm in edit and I'm in the develop panel of edit. And if I go down to color, there's a little eyedropper, same symbol, Put, gives me a little set of crosshairs. I come down here and just click on that neutral target, boom, the white balance is solved. Now, if I want to uh, go in and, and, well, we might as well do that in here too, just because it looks so atrocious. Let's take a look at the one with our little spider cube, the data color spider cube. And you can see we shot that, so you can see that little hole. You know, if I, if I turn on my white point and black point uh, mask to hi show highlight and shadow clipping, uh, what we can do is several things. So first off, grab that eyedropper, click on our neutral gray portion of the cube, boom. We just did the white balance the same as we did uh, with the, the little bit more expensive and heavier um, color checkers from X-Rite and, and Data Color. Now you can go in and you can actually do your raw processing, set your white point and black point. Now you've got this little chrome ball up near the Christmas ornament hanger that shows you specular highlights. There's going to be some blown specular highlights in the lighting on this thing. But this panel should be pure white. It should be pure white like snow. So if I hold down my option key, alt key, for, you know, PC and Mac, and I pull the, or actually I don't even have to do that. I have the clipping point set. So if I start dragging this, we'll start seeing that white clip. We're losing our specular highlights in the little Christmas ornament part. But as I drag this up, we'll start to see, boop, there goes our white. We've got this set as pretty much pure white. We'll pull it back to where we're just not quite losing that pure white color in there. Just not quite. I'm shutting down my, uh, my computer audio since I have notifications coming in. Sorry about that. But just kind of come to that edge where you're not quite losing the pure white. We're not going to worry too much about these specular highlights unless we're going to print. Uh, and, and I'm going to do a quick tip pretty soon about how to adjust to make sure that you don't not lay any ink down on specular highlights where you've got white in your image. We'll, we'll get something to talk about. But in general, it's just fine to have a little bit of that showing up and spec specular highlights are bright. It's like having the sun in your scene if you're photographing a landscape at sunset. Then the same thing with black. 
you're going to pull this shadow slider till you know that little hole in the uh, color checker should be black, whereas what looks black is a slight shade of gray. So right now we've just set our black point and white point. We have definition between the bottom of the cube and that hole in the cube. And we've got our white point set just below that white. So we've been able to white balance and set the black and white points really quick and really easily and accurately. Uh, and differentiate that white point from specular highlights with a really cheap, ultra lightweight one ounce tool. It's, a, it's definitely worth tossing one of these in your photo bag. Again, links to all three of these are in the video description. Just you know, scroll down, show more, or click the video title to get to that description. All right, hey, really quick before I jump off the computer, I wanna share with you a really cool thing that my good friends and photo mentors, Johnny Scott and Eva Momotuk are doing. They're the most soulful, cool, amazing couple of photographers who've been working together for big publications like Nat Geo and BBC and Smithsonian for decades. And I've learned so much from them. They're involved with a group of National Geographic photographers called the Photo Society. And they're having a charity flash sale this month, really affordable, beautiful signed prints by epic photographers, including them. So I'll just show, I'll share that with you really quick. It's a neat opportunity to get a beautiful piece of art from a photographer that you admire and donate half the money to a good cause at the same time. All right, so I'm gonna put a link uh, to this page in the YouTube description. It's the photosocietyprints.org. And if you take a look at what they're doing, they've got prints from Photo Society members, including John and Eva. John and Eva have a couple of photos. This is with this tilt adapter that's an amazing tool that lets a long lens get extreme depth of field. And this is an underwater apparatus photographing sockeye salmon that I actually helped them with up on the Fraser River uh, years ago in, in Canada. But you can buy any of these amazing photographs by these amazing photographers for a hundred dollars. It's about a six and a half by nine and a half print. And you can direct 50% of the funds from that sale to either campaign zero, which is looking towards effective uh, reforms to policing, to end violence uh, by the police in America or direct relief, which is a organization of doctors uh, working to help people that have limited medical resources, particularly with the COVID pandemic. And, and this sale is only going through the end of the month. So run over here, check it out. It's definitely a, a great opportunity to get a beautiful signed print uh, from a great photographer. So I really appreciate you checking that out. And again, links in the YouTube video description. If you just click the title or click show more, you'll see it right there. Okay, so if you're really serious about color, you know, I think it's definitely worth 50 bucks to toss one of these little one ounce things in your camera bag. Just throwing it out in your scene, shoot it once, you know, shoot your scene with this sitting on the stump in the landscape even, or next to your subject if you're shooting a portrait. Have your portrait subject hold it up and then put it away. Boom, you just, you know, white balance with that, and then you can synchronize it through all the rest of your images when you're editing. Um, the color checker is also really nice. If you're interested in doing, you know, custom lookup tables or profiles, custom LUTs, this thing will help you create perfect LUTs for a specific lighting condition that you, that you use frequently. So will the spider checker, and it's a little bit bigger and certainly nicer for use in the studio. Uh, and for some other uses, including one I'll show you in a quick tip video I'm gonna do on creating a custom white balance for a given situation with your Nikon Z6 and Z7. It's easier than ever with those cameras, and that's coming really soon. So before I go, I'm gonna take a question. I've had a lot of questions about workshops moving forward given the current pandemic and everything that's happening worldwide. Uh, I'm not planning any big international workshops. I'm not putting them on the books until we know more about what's going on and what travel is going to look like. I am still intending to run my Portland, Oregon workshop. Uh, it's the last day of July and the first few days of August. Uh, I have a number of people signed up for that. We're gonna do some careful social distancing and be sure not to spread it. Uh, the, the, any, any kind of illness while we're having that workshop, but we're gonna have a lot of fun. I've got a big uh, room planned where we can sit a fair distance apart while still doing some training, and I've got some fun places to take people. And I still intend to do my big national park sweep through Yellowstone down into Moab with a stop in the Tetons in the middle. 
uh, and that's coming this fall. So look for more details on those soon. Hey, again, thanks so much to everybody who's supporting this channel. You know, this whole thing's a big conversation about photography. It's driven by your questions, your comments, your interests, uh, and, and I so appreciate everybody uh, for spreading the word, for sharing these videos, for subscribing to the channel. There's a subscribe link down there in the bottom right. Whenever you want to click it, it looks like a little double H. Uh, thanks so much, and I hope to see you in office hours. Tuesday morning, 10 a.m., those things are free to everyone. We've been having a ton of great, fun discussions with a lot of regulars and new people, and we're starting to stream them live uh, over YouTube, too. So if you can't make it into the 100% people that get into the Zoom meeting to be interactive. You can stream it on YouTube. Uh, and I appreciate all the support and I, can't, I hope to see you there and we'll talk to you again next week.